we are. Hi folks, I'm Bob Shrub, physical therapist. Brad Heineck, physical therapist. Because we are the most famous physical therapist on the internet. In our opinion, of course, Bob. How the opposite exercises can heal neck, back, shoulder, hip, and knee pain. That's a lot of claims there, isn't it, Brad? Not only that, the whole thing is the opposite. What are you talking about the opposite? Well, we're going to show you what we mean by opposite. You know, the people got to watch the video in order to find the answer here. Actually, I, I know the answer, and it, it's a really good, actually, it's... It makes sense. It makes it? sense and it works. Yeah. So very good. Carry on, Bob. If you are new to our channel, by the way, please take a second to subscribe to us. We provide videos on how to stay healthy, fit, pain free, and we upload every day. Also, go to Facebook. We even had a sign made, uh, Bob and Brad, because Brad and Bob, when we were children, were picked on and we're trying to turn things around now. We got a few likes, so people are <laughs> pretending to like us anyway, right? Yeah. Now. Well, yeah, just, just keep hitting the button or whatever it takes. All right. So the, the basis of this uh, video is that. When, when you live life, you start developing habits, and habits can lead to pain. Mm -hmm. For example, when I write notes, I tend to lean my head to the left. Mm -hmm. And I do this, you know, you can do this hour after hour. Sure. And what happens is I start developing pain down here, my neck and maybe even my arm. So what I have to do is the opposite treatment is actually take my head in the opposite direction and stretch it that way. Right. And this, this applies to neck, back, shoulders, knees, hips. And we're going to show you some of the common ones, the common faults that we see in people, and we're going to show you the, the way to correct it. Right. As a matter of fact, I, I took a course by someone that works with uh, work, work injuries, injuries. Right. and he's done it for years, and he's ex extremely good at what he does. And his whole concept of uh, working with people with pain in the workplace revolves around this concept. And I'm going to show you some examples and talk about them, but you're going to have to just wait a little bit because Bob has more to say. Yeah, it's very simple. I mean, it's a very simple idea, but it's very effective, especially when you do repeated movements because mm -hmm. now you're starting to get some blood flow to the area. And plus, you're correcting the, the default. Right. So, should we start with the first one, the next one, Brad? Well, we better than starting with the last one. <laughs> what do you want do me I, to do? Can I get a different partner? <laughs> I want to grab a chair. This so, one? we're going to first show. Why don't you show the first one? So, this is a common oh, sure. neck default that we start getting, especially with people. Yeah, forward head. Um, if they have a computer screen that's a little bit too low, we always tell them to raise it up because that'll help try to correct sure. that. Yep. But if you, you know, all of us tend to have to do that forward head once in a while, even when we don't want to, especially if you have bifocals. Sure, right. And so the correction for that is to actually, your, your head is forward, that's the, 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 the one direction. The opposite is to actually do a chin tuck. And that's why we're always, you know, nagging on you, basically. Right. To we do these chin tucks because it's taking you in the opposite direction. And, you know, if, if you watch a lot of our videos, and there's, you know, quite a few people who have, you might be getting bored of this particular chin tuck stretch, but we repeat it because it works. Right. And it's a really effective one because almost everyone has head forward posture sooner or later with cell phones, computers, etc. So, and, and, you know, to take that even a little further, sometimes we do the chin tuck and then we even go neck uh, extension you a little bet. bit. Yeah. So, because, again, your head's forward. So we're going to bring your neck back the other right. direction, which used to be considered years ago a harmful position for your neck. Right. And now we know that's not true by any means. Right. And again, when you do these, they should feel like a good stretch. If for some reason they, they create a sharp pain, there will be a few cases where it may, then you know you shouldn't do it. But What you're looking for is that it feels better after. Right. Even if it hurts a little bit while you're doing mm -hmm. it, the exercise, but it feels better after, that's a good sign. Right. But if it feels better while you're doing it and then it hurts worse after, yeah, then, then also, it, right. that usually doesn't happen, but it can, and so right. we need to forewarn those uh, occasions. And let's go back to the one I was talking about, Brad. So my head, neck is like this. So what I do is, I, I, you know, I turn, you know, I always tilt my head this way. So what I do is first is a chin tuck, and then I bend to the right. Okay. Chin tuck and bend to the right, because I'm often forward yeah. and to the side. You can tell our, my age a little bit, because, you know, that was the Forrest Gump. His son had that posture. Oh, that's right. And Forrest Gump boys did too. So I would imagine. He's talking about the scene in the movie where Forrest Gump is sitting with his son, finds out his son, and they both tilt their head to the left when they're watching the <laughs> right. TV screen or right. I don't right. know which one it was. I just had a patient recently, though, neck pain, arm pain, causing a problem. You know, it was a big problem. And this was her exercise. This fixed 90% of it. I raised her computer screen six inches right around in there. And all she had to do was same with a bob. She just turned her head and she did this 
and within a few days, arm pain was it's gone. It's shocking how well that works right. sometimes. Change so. of posture, go the opposite direction. All right, let's go to the next one, Brad. Shoulder. Um, a lot of people, again, because they're kind of in a slump position, their shoulder is actually in a kind of a flexed position. It's actually moving forward a little bit. So believe it right. or not, one of the one of the first exercises we have them do, uh, which in the first realm of exercises, is we actually have them work on shoulder extension. Right. And th there's a couple ways you can do that. You can actually um, take a pole. You want to show that, Brad? Sure. So shoulder extension means going back this way. Uh, therapy talk. Okay. Um, the other thing I want to mention for sure is before you start doing your extension is good posture first. Right. First, correct your posture, get your shoulders back, and then we can start working on extension. But the thing about going back behind you, there, you need something to assist. So if you just take a, a broomstick, a broomstick, or, a pole or, or, or yeah, a piece of doweling, or whatever you may have, and go like this. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to raise my hand up on here, going to get it behind me, so it's 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 behind me, not off to the side. It's behind. I'll show you from this side. And then if I just bend my knees, I'm getting a nice stretch there. Okay, or I can lean backwards. Either way, I'm getting a little more you extension. You can also go like this, Brad. Oh, sure. Yeah, you, can, yep. you can take your broomstick and go back like that. Right. And the way you put your hand may make a difference. My thumb is forward now, but it, it might be better if you turn your hand this way for your thumb is pointing away. I always and, go back and forth on that. I don't know what's, it, it, it seems like it, for some people it's better one way and others it's better the other way. I'll go whichever way I get better results, whichever way it feels better doing it as well as when you, you get done. You can do this with a countertop too. I mean, you, sure. you know, if you have a high countertop and you just, you bend back or the yeah. back of a chair, you can, you can actually work on that. I've had people do their bookshelves. They may have oh, multiple sure. bookshelves and you go to the one that's about the right height and then you squat down and get that stretch. Now, you got to be careful of some of these shoulder pains. If it's stretched, you get a sharp pain up in here. Well, you have to back off because you're looking may... for the same result that it starts to feel better. Another one that a lot of times your shoulders tight is, is working on internal rotation. This is not something you normally do throughout the day. You're probably doing more external rotation. So you actually, you can just take a belt, make a little loop like this. Yeah. This is always hard part, isn't it, Brad? Well, getting it set up. <laughs> Allow me to help, Bob. Yeah, there we go. A shiny belt works really nicely. So now I'll watch this. This can actually give me a little pressure, and I can work on getting my uh, hand up further and further up my back. If you have a shiny belt, the reason a shiny one works because it slips over the clothing really nicely, which does make a big difference on this stretch. Now, if you think about this motion, uh, you know, for women, if they're putting on their clothes and they have the, their bazooka, the yep, or anybody just to tuck your shirt in, that's the, moti that's the movement you need, and that's what we call internal rotation. You want to scratch your back. That's what yeah, you, you want to yeah. scratch. Exactly, Bob. All right, how about for low uh, mid-back, Brad? You know, a lot of times, again, people are slumped forward, so the opposite is going into extension mm -hmm. with the back. And one of the great ways of doing that is using a ball. And it's got a good shirt for that, so it yeah, contrasts. Yeah, exactly. And, and get a ball six, eight inches, a soft one. This is half flat, and I actually like it that way. If it's a real uh, pumped up but hard ball, it won't work very well. It won't be as comfortable. Um, so here we go. I'm going to position it there. The opposite of this is going the other direction. All right. oh. And it's amazing. This not only helps the thoracic spine to the back, but your shoulders, you get to breathe. I mean, immediately I can breathe. Much I had a girl free. that was just having severe pain. She's a school teacher, yep. an old friend of mine, actually. Mm -hmm. And she came in, that's all I showed her, gone away. Sure. She actually bought us a bottle of wine for oh, it. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. So, you know, that's good payment. That is good payment. So, and another one, let's go right to the low back. We tend to oh. flex like this too much. Yep. And I'm going to be doing these because I actually had a little episode of back pain starting this week. And I've been doing these, and so I'm taking my back in the opposite direction. Sure. So if you look in here, I'm putting my hands below my shoulders, and I'm bending up like this. Now, the thing here is you don't want the pelvis to come off the floor like yeah, this. Yeah, we don't, we don't want that gap there. If you can't go any higher than this, and this is, you're stuck, and that's it, keep working in this range sure. until you can go further and further. You, but eventually you might, you're going to yeah. go like this. I just had a woman, she couldn't do this at all. She was so tight, so I just had her go on her forearms. Oh, sure. And, and that was as far as she could go that day. Um, and, but we're still getting the opposite. Yep, so. opposite direction. It's like the yin and the yin. You need to balance things out. If you're bent forward, you need to balance it out back this way. I'm going to show one for the hip and one for the knee, Brad. Okay? The hip? 
Yeah, not, not hips. hips. Oh, the hips. Okay. So, because we're a sitting society, the, your your hips are often in this flexed position. Right. So we actually want to stretch them the other way if you're having some pain. Sure. And one of the best ways to do that is to take maybe a pad like this. This yeah. is from OPTP, by the way. Um, or you can take a pillow. You don't need to buy anything. Maybe you should do it on the other leg sure. so they can see that better. So I'm going to go like this and put that pillow on the floor because it's very hard on the knee otherwise. Yeah. So I'm stretching the hip in the opposite direction here. So we're talking about the hip flexor muscles. It's a deep muscle. It's kind of in the lower part of your abdomen and it connects to your just at the lower part of your hip bone hip socket there so Bob's stretching it right now and just so you know that we eat our own cooking I do this one every morning so that's an old saying I think what practice what you preach kind yeah of basically yeah. Yeah. yeah all right and let's go to the final one Brad here um, with your knee same thing with knees especially uh, people who have arthritis in their knees you tend to sit a lot um, and when you sit you, your knee actually gets tightened to the point where it doesn't extend completely. Sure. And you'll be able to tell that by, if you put both feet up on a stool, I'm kind of losing my mic here. Uh oh. You could have got me a stool, Brad. This one right over there. We'll just use this one. <laughs> so, yeah, in, you know, tight ham screens will do this, or you may have a little contracture in your joint itself. So, if I put it up on a stool and I go like this, and I see one is higher than the other, mm -hmm. that one is tight, and that probably, if you can gain some of that extension back, you'll find often the knee pain drops in that joint. Sure. So, you know, basically, if I was stretching this one, I'd be pressure on, pressure off. Pressure on, pressure off. You can do that every hour. Sure. Um, it's an easy one to do. You can do it on the floor like this even. And pressure, stretch it like that. Um, so, same rules are if you're creating pain, you need to stop doing it. It should feel better with repetition. And after you're done, it should feel better as well. If you don't have that result, if it hurts while you're doing it, the more you do it, more it hurts and you're done, then stop that. Oftentimes, the opposite will happen. It'll feel better. Yeah, and by the way, if anybody out there watches Seinfeld and they watch the episode uh, with when George Costanza did the opposite of everything, he found out nothing was working for him. So he decided, rather than <laughs> try the normal approach to picking up women, he tried the opposite. So he goes up to a woman and says, by the way, I'm, I'm, I'm unemployed. I live in my parents' basement, and I'm bald or something like that. And she goes, oh, hi. <laughs> So if anybody knows that episode, yeah. give us a yell. Yeah, that really went. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a funny we, episode. We digress. The opposite. <laughs> All right, thanks for watching.